Here are 17 businesses that you can start during the 2023 recession. For each of these business ideas, I'm gonna give you three key points. One, an explanation of the business model. Two, what the typical profit margins of this business model are, so you know how much you need to make to actually profit a lot of money. And three, my personal opinion on these business models based on what I've seen from people I know running these businesses, clients I've worked with, or my own personal experience. As we all know, you can make a ton of money online, but there are a ton of options out there. In fact, there are too many options, and it can be incredibly difficult to know which business is gonna work for you based on your goals and your life scenario. My goal here is to open up your mind, open up your eyes, give you some ideas as to what I think you should do, but at the end of the day, you know yourself best. So you need to pick something that you think could work for you long-term. So I'm not gonna waste any time, we're just gonna get straight into it. Business model number one, only fans. Look, you all probably know what this is. This is the explanation. So you start a social media page, you post content, that could be photos or videos, and maybe you're using TikTok or Instagram to get attention. Once you get enough attention and you've got a few thousand followers that really enjoy your content, you then start your only fans page. So you're basically sending your fans to a paid monthly subscription, typically nine or $10 per month. So someone pays nine or $10 a month and they get exclusive access to extra content. That could be photos or that could be videos. So your main goal, as a business owner is to push as many people from your social media to OnlyFans to pay you monthly. But you also need to keep the people that have already subscribed to your OnlyFans happy. So you need to be creating content on the front end on social media to get people interested, but you also need to be putting out a lot of content to your fans that have paid so that they keep paying. A lot of OnlyFans creators make a lot of money from upsells. So let's say you pay $10 a month to get access to some spicy photos. Well, typically there's the option to pay more money to chat one-on-one -on -one with the creator, to potentially get a custom photo or a personalized video, or something a lot more exclusive for a lot more money. So one of my clients in my marketing agency used to run an OnlyFans page, and she would easily make between 50 to 100K per month with her OnlyFans business. She did, however, have close to 1 million followers on Instagram. So she worked very, very hard for years before that, building up that audience. And I know from experience with her, most of her money was made from people paying her monthly, maybe paying the $10 subscription, and about 20 to 30% was made from those upsells. Okay, point number two, the profit margins on this business are incredibly high. I would estimate margins to be 90% or above because typically an OnlyFans creator doesn't have a team and most times they do everything themselves. Their main expense is going to be photo shoots and video shoots if they're, if they're hiring a professional photographer or videographer. Apart from that, pretty much all the money you make is going to be profit. Okay, personal opinion, would I recommend you do this? Only if you're okay with it. If you are happy with your family and your friends finding out about you running an OnlyFans and making money from photos or videos, that's fine by me and it could work for you. But I do know there's a lot of people that go into this industry thinking they're gonna make a ton of money. A lot of girls specifically and they don't and then they've got a couple thousand followers on Instagram and they're making an extra one two or three hundred dollars a month with OnlyFans but they have the reputation of being an OnlyFans creator and unfortunately that comes sometimes with a negative connotation and may affect your ability to get certain jobs so would I personally do it no I wouldn't but it is a very lucrative business business number two software as a service aka SaaS explanation of what this is you build a software that is useful by a portion of the market you charge people a monthly fee to use Use your software or your platform. Examples of this would be Slack, Zapier, Zoom, or any software or platform that you use. Typically, these softwares have a free plan or a free trial and then a paid version. Zoom, for example, offers their software for free, but if you use the software a lot, you'll probably upgrade and pay the monthly fee. I pay for a ton of softwares in my businesses and I'm more than happy to pay them because I know the cost of that business running the software is very, very expensive. So profit margins on a SaaS company are typically around 60%, which is very good. And the reason they're so high is because when you build a piece of software, of course you need to edit and update the software as time goes on and fix any bugs. But typically once the product is done, it is 80% done. So you build it once, and just make small iterations and you can keep selling that product. The reason these margins aren't higher and that they're not 70 or 80% is because there is a lot of operational costs. To pay someone to manage a software for you or to build out the website behind it, that costs a lot of money. Software developers, engineers, these are people that make a lot of money because their skills are very valuable. 
So would I recommend that you start a SaaS company? Probably not. For most people, this is not going to make sense. You need to have a way first off to get customers. So you either need to have an audience or a very effective marketing strategy. You also need to be able to go into the red, maybe 10, 20, or even all the way up to 100K before you start making any money because it requires a huge capital investment and most softwares do fail. However, this is something that I probably will look into in later life. For me right now, it wouldn't make sense, but when I have way more money to my name and I have something that I know the market would actually benefit from, I may look at this option. Business number three is dropshipping. Now look, you've probably seen a bunch of dropshippers on your TikTok or you page showing you their Shopify dashboards making 10K or 20K a month. And I have done dropshipping in the past. In fact, I've had multiple stores, so I can speak to you from experience. Here's the explanation of what dropshipping is in case you didn't know. You find an in-demand product, you create a website, typically with shopify.com. You list your product, which you've sourced from a website such as AliExpress, which is a supplier in China. You find the product for $5 and you sell it for 15. You then market this on social media, right? Now, at this current time of recording, a lot of people are doing this with TikTok, creating semi-viral videos with products, posting them on a TikTok account, and hoping that people then click the link in the bio to the website and buy the product. What attracts a lot of people, including myself, in the past to this business model is that you can remain anonymous. You don't have to put your face out there or, or your name to the business. You're pretty much just selling a product that already exists to people that want the product and you're profiting in between. Now, profit margins for this type of business are pretty low. The average profit margin is about 20%. The reason the margins are so low is mainly because there is a lot of advertising expenses typically that you will need to run up to make sales. Now, if you find a product for $5, you list it on your website for $15 or $20, and if you can create TikTok videos that are going viral, you can make a lot of money with this without any advertising costs. You make a 10 or even a $15 profit on every sale you make. If you make 10 sales a day, you've just made $150, which sounds great. But as I mentioned, the big problem is that most people cannot create videos that go viral. So most people are posting content on TikTok or different platforms for their products, but they never go viral. And if they don't go viral, then you have to resort to running paid advertising, Facebook or Instagram ads or TikTok ads for your product. These are very expensive and very, very difficult to make work. From my personal experience, when I used to do drop shipping, I did it in an era where it was a lot easier. Nobody was doing it. Nobody was aware that AliExpress existed and you didn't have to be as skilled. Nowadays, you've got to be incredibly skilled to sell a product to a stranger if you don't have reviews, testimonials, and if your business is just brand new. Would I recommend it? No, unless you have tons of experience marketing in the past and you have a lot of knowledge about sales and customer psychology. Business number four is an e-commerce brand. This is very, very similar to dropshipping, so we're not gonna get into too many details. The main difference is that instead of sending a product directly from your supplier in China, to your customer, let's say in the UK, you buy the products in bulk. So you buy a hundred products at a time, ship them to your house or your warehouse, and you then send the products directly to your customers. It gives you more control over the shipping times and also over the brand and how it looks. Oftentimes a drop shipping product arrives in a blank envelope with no logo or no name on it and just a little product with a bunch of numbers. I've also run an e-commerce brand in the past and the profit margins on an e-commerce brand from my experience were better. And that's because when you buy products in bulk, you you can get a better discount on those products and you typically get more customers coming back and buying more products from you because it's a better experience than buying from a drop shipping business product looks nicer comes in a nicer box everything just seems more professional would i recommend you start this very similar to drop shipping if you have a lot of experience with advertising and marketing this could make sense for you but it's an incredibly saturated marketplace almost everybody down the street wants to start a clothing brand or a jewelry company or a sunglasses company and after a certain time, there's only so many of those companies that can exist. So I ran an e-commerce brand, but it had a lifetime. It had a span. I knew it wasn't going to last forever. Did it for a couple of years, made a little bit of money. Happy days. But I knew I had to move on eventually. It was just a stepping stone to something bigger. Next up, affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is basically selling somebody else's product or digital product and you get a commission for every sale that you make. Very attractive, right? You don't have to do any of the work. You sell the product, you make some money and you just have to sell it, right? You just have to market the product. The profit margins for affiliate marketing are usually pretty good. Again, this really comes down to how you're getting customers. If you're posting videos on TikTok and your videos are going viral, you will be able to sell a product, whether that's a physical product or a digital product and make a lot of money because you're not really going to have any expenses. But most people, again, can't do that. They try it, it doesn't work, and they don't have the necessary skills to be able to create videos that go viral. So then they have to rely on also 
running paid advertising. And this is where most people lose a lot of money. Affiliate marketing makes a lot of sense for people that already have an audience and have the skill of building a social media page. So my opinion on this is, yes, you should try this if you have those skills or if you have an audience. But what I do know is that you're never gonna make as much money as the person who's actually the owner of the product. That's where you make the real money. Next business model is Amazon FBA. This means fulfillment by Amazon. Essentially, how people make money with Amazon FBA is they find a product that's currently selling on Amazon. They then try and find it on a website where they can buy that product in bulk at a cheaper price, buy the product in bulk, send it to Amazon's fulfillment center where they handle the shipping process for you, and then you just list it on Amazon and hopefully get some sales. The profit margins on an Amazon FBA business are very similar to dropshipping and e-commerce, typically ranging between 15 to 30%. Now my opinion on Amazon FBA is definitely very biased. I've never tried Amazon FBA and I don't know anybody that has had a positive experience with this. So anybody that I've spoke to has had a pretty negative experience. And I understand why. It's very, very competitive and you're selling a product that's not unique and you're basically just listing it on a platform hoping it's gonna sell. But the problem there is if you find that Schweppes Lemon is selling really well on Amazon and you find a supplier that can get you the cans for 80 cent and you sell them on Amazon for $1.50, there's probably a bunch of other people that have also spotted this exact product. There's a lot of tools and softwares that spot these products. So by the time you buy it in bulk and try and sell it, it could be saturated. And it may not work anymore and you're left with 4,000 of these cans in your, in your basement. It also is very, very costly to start up. You're gonna need multiple hundreds, if not thousands, just to get your first batch of products in. And then you gotta hope that they sell. There's no guarantee they do. So you could be left sitting on thousands of inventory units. The next business model we're gonna look at is being a sales closer. All right, the explanation is quite literally you taking sales calls, okay? So you speaking to people on the phone or on Zoom or potentially over email or an Instagram page and selling a product for somebody on their behalf. The margins for a sales closer is typically 100%. It's just you doing all the work, selling the products and that's it. You don't really need to have any softwares or expenses. I'll give you my opinion on this right now. So I have worked as a sales closer and I have hired a sales closer. So I have a good understanding of if this is a good business for you to run with. It's not so much a business, but it's more of a, a side hustle and a skill. And yes, I think this is actually an amazing thing for you to do. My first experience with this was working with one of my freelance marketing clients. He was a vegan fitness coach and I would essentially text and call people that were interested in working with him where they wanted to be coached by him. And I would see if they were a good fit for his coaching program. So we were selling a 12 or 16 week fitness nutrition coaching program for $1,000. And I would close quite a few people. The main problem we had was that I could close people, but one, his coaching wasn't that good. So we would get quite a lot of negative feedback and people would want refunds, which is not good. And two, he didn't have a lot of leads. So he might only get one or two leads per day. And for me to get those two people to book in a phone call with me, and then for me to sell them is really not that feasible. For that to make sense, he would need to have dozens of leads every day. So, you know, he would need to make sure that my calendar each day is filled out with at least maybe three or four people ready to sit down and speak with me so I can see if they're a good fit and then sell them. But I gained a lot of experience doing this. And when I started my marketing agency, this really helped me because I had a little bit of an understanding of how to sell stuff online, how to take payment and the psychology behind convincing someone to buy what I was selling. So it did help my later business venture. And I know for a lot of people, it builds a lot of character because sales is very difficult. And it's not difficult in the fact that you have to learn a lot. It's difficult because it's scary. That's why it's difficult. Would I recommend it? Yes, 100%. I really think this is a great side hustle for somebody to try out. The problem most people experience is finding a sales job. Finding a sales job can be quite tough, especially if you don't have experience. Because for example, if I have a business and I've got leads, people that wanna buy from me and I give them to you, I have to trust you. And I've also gotta make sure that you do a good job because if not, those leads are wasted. Next up, UGC creator. This means user generated content creator. The explanation of this is somebody getting sent a product from a company like this can right here and then taking photos and videos with the product for the brand to then use in their marketing. This is very popular right now and there's a lot of money to be made in this space. 
The margins as a UGC creator are typically very, very high, close to 100%. But similar to what we looked at with sales closing, the most difficult part about being a UGC creator is getting clients. It's getting a business to trust you to take photos and videos for them. My opinion, would I recommend that you do this? I think if you have a love for photography and videography and you really understand how to create good content online, this might be a really viable option for you. But you do need to get good at two sides of the business. Side one is taking the photos, taking the videos, making sure they look good. But side two is getting clients, okay? So that's where you're gonna be messaging brands on Instagram or email or even hopping on the phone with them. And that's the bit that most people struggle with as well because like with sales, it's very, very scary. It's very awkward sometimes. And although you might be very skilled at the skill of creating content, you need to be good at the sales side as well. Next up, we have a language teacher. Explanation, AKA, you know Spanish and English. You find people in Spain that wanna learn English and you teach them for an hourly rate. The margins on this, again, close to 100%, which is you delivering a class to somebody and they pay you per hour. Should you do this? I know a lot of people that do this and it does make them some nice change on the side. It depends where you live. If you, for example, live in Spain, you're not gonna be able to charge too much money because the average wage here is lower. But if you were to live in New York City, in America, I'd imagine you could charge a lot more money for this exact same service. There is the potential to do this online, which I think is the future of this. Next up, yoga or fitness trainer. Very similar to teaching a language class. You typically will charge per hour or you might have a monthly package that people sign up to. Margins on this are incredibly good, also close to 100%. In fact, I used to want to be a yoga teacher and I also wanted to be a fitness coach. So I do have some experience with this. And because I was trying to do everything online, aka coaching and training people over the internet, not in person, my biggest struggle was getting clients. My biggest struggle was attracting people that were actually interested in what I do and were willing to pay me for that service. I did get some clients and I did make some money doing this. The reason I didn't do this long term was I realized that yoga and fitness and working out were a passion of mine. And following your passion is not always the best thing to do because it took the love out of the actual thing that I liked doing. If you train people 10 hours a day in the gym, you're probably not gonna be very motivated to then go and work out yourself because you've just done it all day. And I'd rather keep that for myself. So should you do this? Maybe, yes, if you have that skill and you don't mind the fact that your passion might get diluted. But not many people do this long term because most people tend to burn out in these industries. Okay, we're gonna try speed through some of the next ones because I've taken way too much time and I don't wanna waste too much of your time. So we got copywriting, AKA writing emails or social media content or even a website for a business in exchange for a fee. Typically this fee is not per hour. Some people do charge per hour, but a lot of people charge per project. So you might get paid $400 to write four blog posts for a business. I also did copywriting for quite some months and really enjoyed the process. I found it very, very fun, but I did find it very, very taxing, right? It's very creative work, so you really have to have your brain switched on. And there were some days where I just wasn't in the mood to write a blog or an email, and I would find that very difficult to get the work done. Margins were 100%, and I think similar to sales closing, this is one of the things I would recommend to a lot of people who are just starting off because learning copywriting will help your understanding of marketing and how businesses operate. Next up, flipping social media accounts, aka you buy an Instagram page for $500. You build up the page, post some content and sell it, you know, a couple of weeks later for 750. You just made a $250 profit. I have experience with this on Twitter and I sold multiple pages, but I don't think it is very sustainable and it's more of a stepping stone. Typically, this is something someone would do for a few months and then they move on because you're not guaranteed to make a sale. You could buy a page for 500 and you may struggle to sell the page. So you may actually have to just keep the page and call it a $500 loss. Although the margins are very good, you'll typically keep all of the profit you make. There is quite a bit of risk here for you to lose money. Next up, we have building your own social media page, AKA a theme or niche page, and then using the audience you've built to sell shout outs and do promotions. I've also done this on Twitter. I know a lot of guys that do this on Instagram, and this can also make you a ton of money, but it is a lot of work and it typically is a, a long grind before you make any money. For me, I had to build a Twitter page for over one year before I made a single dollar. So I spent a year working on this every single day, building up the page, posting content, and only after one year did I receive my first bit of money. And it wasn't even a lot of money. It was like $10. There are people that make tens of thousands a month doing this, so it can make you a lot of money and the margins are pretty good, but it takes a lot, a lot of work. So if you're trying to get rich quick, this is definitely not it. Next up is a business that I currently run, coaching slash mentoring, AKA teaching somebody else how to do something that I've done myself. To me, this is a long-term business and this is not something that you start if you wanna make a bunch of money very fast. It's also very difficult to get clients that will pay you for your advice unless you have real experience. And if you're a beginner and you don't have real experience, 
it's not really gonna make sense. I believe you have to do something and do it well for a long time and then you can start a coaching or a mentoring business. One of my clients is a fitness coach and he coaches slash mentors online and he makes about 100K a month and he only has 30,000 followers on Instagram, which is absolutely wild. Because there are also people that have 30,000 followers on Instagram that make 1,000 per month. So this type of business can be incredibly profitable and lucrative, and the profit margins are very good, typically 70% or above, but you have to be very good at sales, you have to have that experience, and this is not for beginners. Our third last business is freelancing. This is you learning a high income skill and then selling that skill as a service to business owners and people that need this service, typically on a site such as Upwork or Fiverr. I've also done freelancing. The margins are very good. Margins are close to 100%. Very difficult to scale this type of business, but very good for cash flow. And the experience that you get from learning a high income skill and working with business owners and clients is very valuable. So I do recommend this one. Second last, we have a marketing agency. The explanation of this is you finding an in-demand service such as Facebook ads, Google ads, email marketing, typically a service that makes money for a business, right? That helps them get new customers. And then you selling this to business owners and then outsourcing the work. Freelancing is you doing all the work yourself. A marketing agency is where you sell a service and then you get other people, typically contractors and other freelancers to do a lot of work for you. So you charge a client 1,000, you find John who will do the service for 200 and then you pocket the difference. The profit margins are very good, typically 70 to 80%. And I have built a seven figure marketing agency. So if you want to learn more about this business model, feel free to look at the description of this video and book in a free consultation with myself. Would I recommend it? Yes, I am slightly biased because I do coach and mentor people how to do this, but I personally built a seven figure business and I've helped over hundred people make money with this. So I do know this does work if you're willing to put in the work. Typically most people make around 1.5 to 5k a month in their first 90 days with most of that being profit and the final business model is a subset of a marketing agency and i call this a content agency this is the same as as what we just talked about but you're just selling content you're just selling content such as tiktok videos instagram reels youtube videos or images or quotes for instagram you're selling these to business owners. So you create the content, you give it to them and they post it on their social media. And this typically can of course make them money, but it's more focused on saving them time and headache and hassle. This is the main service that my agency provides to our clients. And I know this can also be very profitable around 70 to 80%. Cool guys, that is a wrap. There are more businesses that I would like to discuss. If you want a part two, definitely leave a comment below and I can try and sort that out. Again, if you do want to speak to me about the business models that I run, such as a marketing agency, and you want to learn how beginners can typically start this up and make up to 5k a month in their first 90 days, feel free to book a free call below or check the links in the description to see what we do and how we can help you out. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon.